Hello and welcome everybody to a new video from Jörg, Jogler 66, Hour of the Truth. And today, once again in collaboration with my wonderful brother in Christ, Tom Fress, from Inquisition Update, all over the ocean. And I'm not going to do a long introduction. Last time we did talk about Thomas Cranmer, one of the martyrs and the saints of Jesus Christ, who died for his face, who died for his face, that Jesus is the Christ, the papacy is the Antichrist, and that he didn't shut up on that, like probably many other people would have done. And it's a wonderful story what we discovered last time with Thomas Grand, and today we will continue reading that article, and when that is done, we will go back to the book Exploding the Israel Deception, which is the reason why we started this whole study in the first place, that book from Steve Wahlberg, and I think there are many um, of our viewers who are very eager to continue, then we continue at least, the study in that book, and we will from next week on. So we're just finishing this article of Thomas Cranmer. Talk about that, what needs to be talked about, because that man needs his time. Maybe there is also a, uh, another broadcast that Tom and I will do to go into what Fox's Book of Martyrs says on Thomas Cranmer. I'm not sure about that yet. We will see in the future. And I can also promise you, Tom and I pro talked about that, we will continue with the different martyrs before, during and after Reformational times when the study of the book Israel uh, The Israel Deception Exploded is over. You know, we did this during this reading and now we are going really to focus what brought us here in the first place. And that is the reading of, and discussion and the study of that book of Steve Wahlberg, which really puts futurism on the cross, I'd say. And on the cross, nail it to the cross. But nail it to the cross like all the villains have been nailed to the cross righteously, probably in the past. Not like Jesus Christ has been nailed to the cross. So, before I don't know what to say anymore, I just give it over to Tom. Hello, Tom. Welcome to the broadcast. Hello, Yerk, and hello to the listeners. Very pleased to be here. And uh, remind the listeners, as uh, I concluded my portion of the program last time, was a quote from uh, Scripture uh, where, the, where the Scripture says, uh, uh, Do not fear those who can destroy the body. Rather, fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. And uh, that quote was in reference uh, to the subject of our discussion today, Thomas Cranmer, who knew what all the saints of God know, that Jesus is the Christ and the papacy is the Antichrist. And he was adamant on both counts. Jesus is the Christ, the papacy is the Antichrist. And like you said, Yerk, he wouldn't shut up about it. And uh, they finally excommunicated him and they put him under uh, the ban of the Pope and uh, uh, executed him burned him at the stake for his faith in Christ and for revealing what all Bible Christians are to know, that the papacy is the Antichrist. And so the papacy and the king over which the papacy ruled uh, found Thomas Cranmer both a heretic and a, a traitor. See, if you, if, if you live in a Roman Catholic country, and, and the king of the country that you live in is the servant of the Pope, whenever you fall out of favor with the Pope, you automatically fall out of favor with the state. Okay? So the Roman Catholic Church deemed him a heretic, and the, and the Roman Catholic state, in answer, labeled him a traitor. And on both counts, he was put on the stake to burn. And what he really was, was a saint of the Most High. And in an attempt to save his life, he recanted some of the things that he'd wrote, that he had written about the Pope and about Roman Catholicism and one thing and another. And uh, just like Peter, who denied Christ three times, uh, Thomas Cranmer uh, denied his own conscience uh, by writing these recantations of what he had written about the papacy and about the Roman Catholic Church. And at the last, uh, 
fearing him who can destroy both body and soul in hell, Thomas Cramer manned up. He put on his big boy panties and he stood in front of the world and reiterated what he had earlier said. Jesus is the Christ. The papacy is the Antichrist. And so they sentenced him to the flames and he swore before God and before all of creation that when the flames began to take his life, that he would that the flames would first consume his rebellious right hand who signed those recantations and a marvelous testimony of faith. He indeed, uh, while the flames were tormenting him, stood and uh, held his right hand out into the flames that had been be consumed first. And uh, so with that introduction, you re recall now where we left off last time. Uh, back to you, Yerk. Yeah, wonderful, Tom. Good. Now, let's see where we are. Uh, we have the text right here. And I'm going to put up a picture of this wonderful saint, Thomas Cranmer. And um, we are speaking now in this part of the text of Thomas Cranmer's execution. On the 21st of March, 1556, the day of his execution, Thomas Cranmer was told to make a final public recantation at the University Church in Oxford. He stood up, gave the expected prayer and exhortation to obey the king and queen, and then, in a final act of defiance, renounced his previous recantations, saying, And now I come to the great thing which so much troubleth my conscience, more than anything that I ever did or said in my whole life, and that is the setting abroad of a writing contrary to the truth, which now here I renounce and refuse as things written with my hand contrary to the truth which I thought in my heart, and written for fear of death, and to save my life, if it might be. And that is, all such bills or papers which I have written or signed with my hand since my degradation, when I have written many things untrue. And for as much as my hand hath offended, writing contrary to my heart, therefore my hand shall first be punished, for when I come to the fire, it shall first be burned. And as for the Pope, I refuse him as Christ's enemy and Antichrist with all his false doctrine. And as for the sacrament, I believe as I have thought in my book, taught in my book against the Bishop of Winchester, which my book teacheth so true a doctrine of the sacrament that it shall stand in the last day before the judgment of God, where the papistical doctrines contrary thereto shall be ashamed to show their face. And as for the sacrament, Tom, this is once again speaking of the, in my opinion, dogma of transubstantiation of the Eucharist in the Mass, yeah. which is an offering yeah. instead it's of a, a celebration. It's a sacrifice right. instead of a celebration. Yeah. In the Roman Catholic Church, it's a sacrifice. And to us, it should be a celebration. That's why Jesus Christ said, do this in remembrance of me. It's we remember memorial. it, we celebrate what he did for us, we celebrate that in joy and in tears, yep. in the joy reminding. because it gives us our eternal life, and in tears because he had to die for our sins. But we don't do that thinking that that bread is the body and soul and the flesh and the bones of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, and specifically, Daniel prophesied that Messiah the Prince would cause the sacrifices and oblations to cease because Jesus became the Lamb of God, the one time all sufficient sacrifice for sin for all men for all time. And at that moment, when he said it is finished, there were no more sacrifices accepted in heaven. No more sacrifices. And yet the Roman Catholic Church defiantly continues to make sacrifice every day in every Roman Catholic Church to make sacrifices. It's called the Eucharist. They call it a bloodless sacrifice. But in any case, 
It is defined by the Roman Catholic Church as a sacrifice, which marks it as the synagogue of Satan. Okay, they reject the blood of Christ by making their own sacrifice. That's how you identify the synagogue of Satan. Those who have no faith in Christ, those who are the enemies of Christ, make sacrifice. They eat and drink damnation to themselves. Now, Cranmer, uh, whatever he believed about the Eucharist, we must believe that God had mercy upon his soul. And uh, uh, we can only hope that, that uh, God was merciful to Thomas Cranmer, who reiterated what he believed in his heart. Number one, that Jesus is the Christ. And number two, the papacy is the Antichrist and all of his false doctrine. And the most false of all of those doctrines is that man ought to make a sacrifice, a propitiatory sacrifice every day in the Roman Catholic Church. And uh, whatever Thomas Cranmer continued to believe until he went to the stake about that Eucharist, about that sacrifice of the Roman Catholic Church, we just trust that uh, God placed it under, under Christ's precious blood and forgave him of his sin. Back to you, Yerk. Yeah, thank you very much, Tom. I think it is very important that we speak about the Eucharist here once again, because there are still people, I think, who don't get it, who just don't get that Jesus finished all sacrifices on the cross with the fulfillment of his going to the cross in Daniel chapter 9. And the Roman Catholic Church just continues as if Jesus Christ never went to the cross. And I think That's that right. is a point we cannot repeat often enough, I think. That's right. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times people get tired of the repetition, but... Uh, I mean, Tom, if, if, so many people it got it, if so many people got it, why are they still walking in that church every Sunday? That's right. That's and exactly take the right. Eucharist. That's exactly right. And most of all, why are they now transforming the memorial of, of the Lord's table in the Protestant and evangelical churches and now calling it the Eucharist? Yeah. In, in God's church, in, in the house of the Lord, they're now regarding the bread and the wine of the memorial called communion. A, a memorial of Christ's death, they're now calling it the Eucharist. That's the travesty of the ecumenical movement. That is the travesty of, of the Jesuit war on Protestantism and evangelicalism in, in the form of the futurist doctrine, the futurist uh, 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 prophetic interpretation that puts the onus of Antichrist on a single individual at the end of time and completely exonerates the whole, the entire diabolical history of the papacy and of the Roman Catholic Church. Now, the Protestant evangelical churches are taking on the very image of that synagogue of Satan in Rome. It's They're a complete humiliation. The mass. It's a They're completely... Performing the, it, yeah. it's, it's an absolute... Uh, it's an absolute betrayal of the truth. A humiliation going, of the Reformation, Tom, I'd, I'd call absolutely. it. Yeah. Absolutely. It, it, it's, uh, it's an attempt to prove the Protestant Reformation a huge mistake. And there was no mistake, ladies and gentlemen. There was no mistake. Uh, the Spirit of God led the Protestant Reformation. It was just like... Just the men involved in, in the Protestant Reformation were like the spies who went into Israel and became fearful. They didn't go all the way. The Protestant reformers did not go all the way. And, and that's what we need today. We need to finish the Protestant Reformation, completely abandon all of the false doctrine, all of the false ritual, all of the false canon law, all of the false control of the Vatican over the governments of the world. Quit fashioning our religious services, our Christian services, after the likeness 
and traditions of the Roman Catholic Church. Quit obeying the Roman Catholic traditions of Sunday, Christmas, Easter, and every other so-called holy day in Christendom. They're nothing but Roman Catholicism warmed over. We didn't go far enough, and I've said so many times, it's one thing to take a man out of the Roman Catholic Church. It's quite another to take the Roman Catholic Church out of the man. And there's too dang much Roman Catholicism left in the Protestant lump, and that's why we're suffering today. Back to you, Yerk. I think, Tom, um, I think, Tom that it is correct to say the Reformers showed us the door but we have to go through it ourselves. That couldn't have said it more perfectly myself. The Protestant reformers showed us the door to the kingdom of heaven, and they failed to go in. Now we must go in. Just like the spies who went into the, to the promised land and saw giants, and they cowered, and they wound up in the desert for 40 years. Not this time! Not this time. Because we fear only him who can destroy body and soul in hell and not the one who can destroy the body here on earth. I fear the same one that Thomas Cranmer feared. Now the article continues to say it was a shocking turnaround, but Cranmer had nothing to lose. He was going to die whatever his actions and beliefs. John Fox, author of Acts and Monuments, more famously called today as Fox's Book of Martyrs, wrote on Thomas Cranmer's execution the following little excerpt. Quote, With thoughts intent upon a far higher object than the empty threats of man, he reached the spot dyed with the blood of Ridley and Latimer. There he knelt for a short time in earnest devotion, and then arose that he might undress and prepare for the fire. Two friars, who had been parties in prevailing upon him to abjure, now endeavoured to draw him off again from the truth, but he was steadfast and immovable in what he had just professed, and before publicly told. A chain was provided to bind him to the stake, and after it had tightly encircled him, fire was put to the fuel, and the flames began soon to ascend. Then. There were glor then were glory sorry, then were the glorious sentiments of the martyr made manifest. Then it was that stretching out his right hand he held it unshrinkingly in the fire till it was burned to a cinder, even before his body was injured, frequently exclaiming, This unworthy right hand apparently insensible of pain, with a countenance of venerable resignation and eyes directed to him for whose cause he suffered, he continued, like St. Saint Stephen, to say, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit, till the fury of the flames terminated his powers of utterance and existence. He closed a life of high sublunary elevation, of constant uneasiness, and of glorious martyrdom on March 21st, 1556. Thomas Cranmer's execution should never have happened. It was unlawful. Thomas Cranmer had obeyed Queen Mary I, Bloody Mary, and had recanted and repented of his Protestant beliefs. He had accepted the authority of his monarch and the Pope. Whatever he felt inside, he had signed his recantations and submitted to the Queen and Church. Why then was this broken man, a man who had turned his back on his real beliefs and convictions, executed? Here we see a picture of, Saint, uh, of the Martyr's Memorial that stands still today in Oxford, England. Well, I discussed this in my previous article on Thomas Cranmer and listed the following as possible reasons. Revenge was one of the first points why he had to die. Did Mary I punish Cranmer for ending her parents' marriage, making her illegitimate, illegitimate and for heralding the English Reformation? An example was his brutal and simply 
uh, was his brutal and simply a way of showing how far Mary I and the Catholic Church would go to stamp out heresy. Politics, the reason why he had to die, was Thomas Cranmer simply too influential and important a man to let live? Or was it theology? Was Mary I simply doing her duty to her God and country by getting rid of an outspoken heretic? Whatever the reasons for the burning of Thomas Cranmer, he was not forgotten and ended up being remembered as a Protestant martyr with the likes of Latimer and Ridley. Today, tourists and visitors can see Martyr's Memorial and also the cross on the road which marks the site where Cranmer, Latimer and Ridley were burned at the stake. The inscription on the memorial reads, To the glory of God and in grateful commemoration of his servants, Thomas Cranmer, Nicholas Ridley, Hugh Latimer, prelates of the Church of England, who near this spot yielded their bodies to be burned, bearing witness to the sacred truths which they had affirmed and maintained against the errors of the Church of Rome, and rejoicing that to them it was given not only to believe in Christ, but also to suffer for his sake. This monument was erected by public subscription in the year of our Lord, 1841. Now, I have to make a little comment here, because when you have this wonderful monument here, and you have that statement on there, saying they had um, bearing witness to the sacred truths which they had affirmed and maintained against the errors of the Church of Rome, and everybody who walks by that and reads this and does, doesn't start any question is a lost man, I tell you. I don't think how such a plate can even be in the world today and people not recognizing what's on it and getting interested in reading what's in it and making the connections that Rome never died. Rome surely didn't die after the burning of Latimer, uh, Ridley and Cranmer. Lo Rome didn't die in the 5th century, Rome didn't die in the 19th or 18th century, for whatever reason is given there. Rome is still ruling, and that is for everybody to see with eyes open. And when you open your eyes, you can even read this plate and think what stands there, and think about why this plate is even up there still today. Like the Apostle Peter, Cranmer betrayed his faith in fear, but then showed great courage and conviction at the end. Rest in peace, Thomas Cranmer, the article ends. Yes, and indeed. Rest in peace. Rest he in and peace. all the saints of Jesus who gave up their life to tell the truth. Jesus yeah, is the Christ. The papacy is the Antichrist. We will see That's him in the, the resurrection, Tom. Uh, I believe so, and I look forward to it. That's our hope. Yep. Bless That's our hope. hope. Nothing else is our hope but that we will be part of the first resurrection of the saints of Jesus yep. Christ. <clears throat> With all the ones who went before us and all the ones who went after uh, will go after us, that we will be raised in the first resurrection and then meet the Lord in the air and reign with him. Yep. Those are the beautiful things. Now the hideous thing is that the Church of England now leads the ecumenical way back to Rome. It's it's a horror. It's it's an unspeakable horror. What is happening in once Protestant Great Britain? It's now become just like all the nations. Catholic warmed over. And. Uh, for all intents and purposes, it, it appears that the Antichrist is winning. Well, the last battle is yet to be fought, and I'll be on the winning side, that of Christ. Back to you, Yerk. Yeah, Tom, I think it is important that we understand that um, Rome has, uh, in the 
yeah, a little bit in the hidden part of the world, being preparing for what's coming. They rose up dioceses all over the world and by that established their shadow government all over the world. They made sure that with concordats, the civil law of every country that has a concordat with the Roman Catholic Church is in agreement with Roman Catholic canon law. They have prepared it so far that they have the laws there. Now we are only waiting for the moment when the Pope stamps his foot on the ground and by that implements all those laws and makes them, puts them into work, where Catholic action is put into the last action, the last work. And that is what people call the New World Order without even having an idea what the New World Order really is all about. Because it's all about just to prepare the world to worship Satan, as he always wanted to be worshipped. We are now a few hundred years further from Latimer, Ridley and Cranmer and Hus and Wycliffe and Savonarola and so many other saints whose name we don't even know. So many saints who have been, who died in the dungeons of the Inquisition all over Europe, especially in Spain, but also in countries like Italy, in countries like France in Germany and in Bohemia and in all these places. Rome has never stopped advancing her agenda and she is still advancing her agenda today and she will not stop until the bitter end. And that that bitter end becomes for you a sweet end. Therefore you have to read your Bible and find your trust in Jesus Christ. Come out of this world as Jesus Christ said Live in the world, but don't be of the world. And find Jesus Christ and accept the peace that he is giving you. As he said, I bring you my peace, not the peace of the world, but I bring you my peace. And the truth will set you free. And when you know the truth, you can do like uh, Cranmer did. Put your fist in the fire until it burns and nothing is left because you have the power that is then given to you by the Holy Spirit. You can endure, like Jesus Christ endured on the cross, like all the martyrs endured in the Inquisition, on the stakes and everywhere else where they were tortured, martyred, and then finally killed. Tom, I'm quite at the end of what I have to say about this, but this Thomas Cranmer story really took it off me and uh, I, I'm almost lost for words for that strength in faith that that man showed. And, uh, you know, envy is a sin and I don't envy, but Lord, I can only pray that I will have the strength that Cranmer showed when the going gets tough. Yeah. I will leave you well, with the last remarks for this broadcast today. Tom. Well, look, Yerk, it was a, it was a gut wrenching story, but a, a story that had been repeated hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of times throughout the Church age. Rome has always been the persecutor of the saints, and Thomas Cranmer was only but one of those saints. The, the ground is literally soaked with the blood of the saints and the martyrs of Jesus. And uh, the righteous have indeed perished. And especially in our generation, none take it to heart. That has to change. The reason people don't know who the Antichrist is today uh, besides the futurist delusion that they're that they're learning in all the churches is that we fail to read and recall the martyrs of Jesus. We don't read Fox's Book of Martyrs anymore. We don't read Protestant literature anymore. We don't understand why people willingly went to the stake and suffered death by fire. We've forgotten all those days. We've forgotten all those saints. No one has taken it to heart. And now because they've all been forgotten, 
now because the Protestant Reformation is deemed in the world to be a failure, a great grand mistake. Now Rome has the upper hand. Rome writes all the stories. Rome writes the future. And their future, they call a new world order. That's when the Pope rules over the kings of the earth, just like he did in the golden days of the Roman Catholic Church. The noonday for the papacy was the midnight of the world, when the Pope ruled supreme over the kings of the earth and was free to persecute the saints of the Most High any time and any way, any means at his disposal. And he had the help of the kings of the earth to do it. We're returning to those days because we've lost our Protestant heritage. We're returning to those treacherous days when the Pope is drunk with the blood of the saints and the martyrs of Jesus because we've forgotten our heritage. We've forgotten the truth. We no longer know who the Antichrist is, and we no longer remember his bloodthirsty type, his bloodthirsty heritage. Drunk with the blood of the saints and the martyrs of Jesus. That's the days that to which we are returning today because we believed lies. We believe futurist lies. We've transferred the hideous reality of the papacy and every pope in succession from the first to the last. We've transferred all of that horror, all of that history, all of that reality to a figment of our futurist imagination, into a single individual near the end of time. And in, in one stroke, we've exonerated the entire diabolical history of the papacy. We've forgotten every drop of saintly blood that was shed by the Pope and by the kings of the earth in history. Now we're going to relive those days. If God doesn't preserve us, we have surrendered to Rome. We've forgotten these days, and now we're going to relive them. And guess who you have to thank? You're in Protestant in name only pastors. Your evangelical in name only pastors. Get yourself a copy of Fox's Book of Martyrs. Start reading for yourself precious Protestant literature. Restore the truth in the churches or abandon them altogether. Thanks for listening. Back. Salvation is by faith alone 
in Christ alone, by grace alone, a sovereign God give faith to man. Salvation's in the Maker's hand. This gospel offends Rome today. They offer up another way, a counterfeit, a compromise. Beware the ancient papal lie with such a cloud of witnesses who by grace died in their Lord. Recall their memory to say by the same faith we live today.